This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. <laughs> Nancy Hello. Pelosi. Ah. How are you doing? Oh gosh, here we go again. Uh, Gordon the Tech Star here, another a pretty unusual episode of Hibachi Talk. I got my good old buddy Rick the Fun, Fun Meister here. Hey, Gordo. And our good old friend Larry Smith is Gordo. back again. You know, so we got two heavy duty uh, bean counter types here in the house. You know, these guys know money. Well, yeah, they know money. They supposedly know we money. got no money. You yeah. got no I money. Got no yeah, money. You got less to have. Have. Anyway, we're going to talk about this, the uh, new federal tax laws. And, and, and uh, so grab yourself a chair and libation to sit down and join us and we're going to try to explain to you no we're not we are not tax consultants we are not tax advisors we um just my disclaimer here you know this is just our observations um if you've got any questions or concerns about any of this stuff you check with your cpa your financial advisor and your tax accountant right. and based on what we're trying to understand with this new tax law you better be talking to them by at least the third quarter you of next need, year you yeah. need to if you don't have one of those people you need to get one by around September to help you this go year. through all to this. To help stuff. you go through all of this because uh, it's it's pretty incredible. Yeah. And yeah. confusing as hell. And we've had discussions today already about, well, no, I researched this and it says that. And I went, no, I researched it's, it's this. It's something, it says else. something else. Yeah. So it's, it's just kind of uh, going to be a fun yeah. kind of conversation. So yeah. we'll talk about the upsides first, if these are upsides. All right. So the, yeah. we'll pop up the first slide. And it's under the current law, we have seven tax brackets. And uh, the bill that the president signed um, has uh, new tax brackets. Right. And so if you can see um, the bill that was signed in the second paragraph or paragraph there, 10%, um, 12%, 22%, 24%, 32%, 35 and 37%. So, you know, the 37, that's a drop from the 39.6 that was um, there before. The 35 percent, we got that. We got um, that's still there. 32 tweaks here and there. So, guys, gonna guys gonna how are you guys gonna do on that one? It'll it'll help, it'll help me since I'm retired. Okay. And, yeah. <laughs> so I'm in mean, a lower bracket. You're in a lower yeah. bracket. Okay. Yeah. So you're now in a lower bracket right, as right. a senior citizen. That's exactly. Right. So am I. I'm a senior yeah. citizen too, and I'm in a lower bracket. Hopefully, we'll see that. And I also am in, and. Retired and in a lower bracket as well. As well, but so think, there may be an upside on that one. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and but I don't think anybody's going to be, unless their income goes up. Right. Well, your Nobody, income will go up because yeah. you're going to be making paying less tax. Yeah. Which may put you in another bracket. I never thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> what if you paid less tax? It comes out. No, it comes out afterwards. It does yeah. 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 at the end. Oh, okay. do all the calculations. The income. I got so scared like, there for a moment. Yeah. Wait, wait a minute. I don't want to do this. So anyway, so so that's interesting. So I thought I'd just show. We pop up a slide and get a show. Um, so the kind of the ten percent. These are for the viewers that watch the show. They can always go back and look at these charts and see um, what what the tax brackets are. Uh, no, next one now, please. So that'll be the one that says the 2018 mm -hmm. tax rate for singles. So this is kind of like your tax rate now for singles. So you make between zero and ninety five hundred dollars. You got to still got to pay. Why? Why was anyone have to pay ten percent on ninety five hundred dollars? You would think not. You yeah. would think zero. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's that's the same as today, at least up to the the ninety. To right. So, you know, that's... It's actually going up a little so, bit. So, and 12% between 9,500 and 30. You know, see, I think, personally, I think those tax brackets, th those should be zero. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Anything, anyone yeah. making under $40,000 a year shouldn't be paying any taxes. You think. You think. Yeah. yeah. You think. Okay. But we, we weren't elected and we didn't make these rules, <laughs> so, which we were we want to point out a lot. But we vote yeah. in the people yeah. that yeah. come up with yeah. the rules. Right. Right? Right. Some Democrats, some Republicans, and some yeah. others. Yeah. So, but this is this is what they came up with. Anyway, so this is, gives you a sense of what the numbers are. Yeah. Um, in the long run, um, the hype and the um, how companies reacted seem to pan out that this is going to be a good thing. Yeah. So, if you go look at the next slide, which is the yeah. couples, you get to see what happens on the um, uh, the tax rate for a couple filing jointly. Um, now it's zero to nineteen thousand, so you know doubled it a little bit. Yeah. But still, I don't a couple. That makes nineteen thousand dollars a year got to pay ten percent tax. That's crazy. It's you crazy. Can't, you can't live on. That's the livable wage. You can't yeah. live on. You that. can't yeah. live on that. Yeah. I mean, so yeah. I'm just going. Yeah. Let's have some common sense here. Just yeah. simple common sense. Yeah. You know, if well, but you can't use Hawaii as an example because we're such a high 
cost of state. Yeah. But if you just took like some of the other states, you know, why? Yeah. And again, we elect these people and they right. come up with this yeah. 2,000 page new tax yeah. law um, and 500, 600,000 and up, a couple paying 37%. I think that's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a third. Yeah. Which is kind of what you're, that's the rough rule of thumb historically, you'd expect kind of that level that of tax. That level yeah. of tax. Yeah. So, I mean, so those, those are, you know, that seems to be reasonable because my thought is that if someone, someone's or someone's making $600,000 a year, they're also spending a lot more money, right? Yeah. They have a more, yeah. more expensive house, they buy more expensive cars, they have bigger houses or whatever. So they're paying more taxes, whether it be property taxes, sales right, taxes, right, right. All of those kinds of things yeah. are coming back into the economy. And they have more disposable income. And they have more kind of disposable income. And then someone that's yeah. making between zero and nineteen thousand and fifty yeah. bucks yeah. just got to yeah. pay twelve hundred dollars a month for rent. Yeah. Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't yeah. make any sense. And, you know, probably I don't. We don't have that. But if you looked at the amount of tax revenues that would generate for the federal government for those, that's not where they're going to get all their tax revenues. No. It's yeah. more the middle class and the richer people are going to pay more of the gross dollars going yeah. in. They're going in, and, yeah. that, and that's what it is. Right. And so, yeah. I mean, we're, again, it's just a layperson's common, we're right. just talking common sense here. Yeah, at that level, you're, you're below the government poverty level, yeah. the government-defined poverty level. Yeah, the level. government still wants to put and, their hand in your yeah. pocket. And so yeah. that's really, I guess, part of the conversation that government should have about, yeah. hey, if you're below the poverty level, should you really be paying taxes? Right. Shouldn't you be receiving? And, and if you don't want to wait for the Fed to do all the work, yeah. you have states here. The state <laughs> of Hawaii could turn around and say, hey, if you're below the poverty level, the we're poverty not going to charge yeah. you a state tax. Right. No yeah. state tax. Yeah. But they, they, gonna, they got the hand in the pocket, right. too. Right. Mm -hmm. So, but, so these people down at the big square building that are supposed to be taking care of us, that we represent us, yeah. I'm not impressed. <laughs> I'm actually depressed. <laughs> so again, for the, those yeah. viewers, few that watch this show, you got to start asking them why they got the hand in our pocket for all of this yeah. stuff. Yeah. Anyway, the rates yeah, changed, yeah. and and, and, um, and it's a such. Good question. So, but now my my favorite one. This is one I think we're going to get into some really good conversation on. Yeah, so, so the next slide comes up. It's the negative impact on high tax states like Hawaii. Yeah, right. So this tax law, this new tax law, high tax states, Hawaii, California, New York, we get beat. So not only are they got their hands in our pocket, now we no longer get the unlimited state deduction and yeah. local deduction. Yeah. It's capped at $10,000. Yeah. Right. So no longer now, so anyone that said, and guess what, I noticed something. Most of these high tax states are blue. That's right. Yeah. Is that a surprise? So, yeah. so, so we, blue, do you mean Democratic? As in Democratic. Yeah. Yeah. Is that so, what you know, mean by blue? So, <laughs> now, just for the audience, uh, you here, I'll, I'll, with, you've got everything represented here. You've got independent, Democrat, and Republican, and we're not going to tell you who that is. It's Curly Larry and Moe. <laughs> <laughs> literally. <laughs> literally. <laughs> literally, yeah. 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 <laughs> and Curly Larry and Moe, yeah. we got it. So, um, but, so, but depending but, upon the day of the week and the time of that day, Either one of us could, could be, change hats. could yeah, yeah be in right. different ones. Or who we're having I a conversation should have, about. Well, wear my Ben Carson hat today. That would have been. <laughs> You'd be asleep though. It would be a very <laughs> dull meeting. Be dull, dull meeting. Anyway, <laughs> but no more unlimited state and local tax yeah. deductions. So that that to me is like that was a really a, a, a stick. Especially yeah, for Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big factor for California. us because we, we both have relatively high. Well, we have high income tax rates. Right. Yeah. And we have relatively high. Property, well, property. actually, fairly reasonable property tax rate, but the the value of the property is higher. Yeah. Right. So, so, if you listen to the propaganda from certain political parties locally, yes, we have the lowest property tax rate. Yes. But they don't bring up the fact that our property tax is much higher than if we had a similar house in Little Rock, Arkansas. Yeah. Or <laughs> yeah. or Wisconsin. Yeah. Or something like that. Anybody that watches HGTV knows yeah. that yeah. what yeah. we pay here is not what they pay. Back yeah. There. What, what they pay there is what we use for. Five percent down payment. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So, but so that you know, so that's going to impact us, and, and probably you know even more you know more so in states that uh, even have higher property taxes, which you know California, California New York, New York have California, higher property taxes than we do. Right. Yeah. So so all of a sudden you know so what people you know as uh, you know what has happened historically, whatever you paid. You uh, at that state at the state and local level, you can deduct that before you got to that taxable income rate. Right. Now only ten thousand. 
only 10,000. So if you happen to be a higher, so even though you might get a break as a high income individual on the rate you pay, you might not be able to deduct your full state taxes mm -hmm. to get to that, the number that you apply that percentage to. Right, so yeah. that it becomes a wash. And I, yeah. you know, I think, and again, that's why you've got to talk to your tax accountant and your, and your financial advisors is the fact that when you start looking at the blending of these, these right, things, right. this could possibly be in a state like Hawaii a negative. Yeah, right. You know, this change right. could be a negative. I don't exactly. know, but it's sure. And, it's going and one of the the things is, it may not impact you, you know, this year or next year. But as our property ta our property taxes, or I'm sorry, our property values go up, right. and we all know, I mean, all of our property going up. values you see the statements have now, gone the assessed up. value of your property yeah. that yes. comes in, and I'm going. Remember when assessed value of property and appraised value of property used to be really far apart? Yes. Now the assessed so value much. are like they're all like yeah. they've all crept up and they're yeah. overlapping. And so those each other. assessed values as they go up, yeah. you know, in a couple of years, if if we didn't get hit with the ten thousand today, yeah, a couple of years, you know, a lot of people are going to be moving up, moving up with the the increase in the assessed. Yeah. So right. we all got to be concerned about that. And fixed income retiree right. types right. who are fixed income earners who you know have you know. Um, May not have a mortgage on their property right. anymore, but the the property tax is going to continue to rise. Yeah. It continues to rise, right. and that and that becomes like it was when they were paying their mortgage before. Right. right. And I don't think that ten thousand dollars is what you know what people would call index. That means okay, if it's ten thousand dollars this year, then you know it might go up by another five percent next year, and another. I I don't know, but I'm believing that it's ten thousand. That's it. And five a, years from now, it's still going to be 10000 When we were working at the sitting and counting, we yeah. put in a computer system that allowed the, the tax assessors to use Google Maps and various Very, other programs, yeah. ArcGIS and stuff, yeah. to analyze property without even going out to the property yeah. and reassess yeah. your yeah. property without even going there. Yeah. And then they go like, oh, there's another building on that property. There is, yeah. And wait, oh. We got to add There's more tax. Been an oh wait a minute! There. They never got a building permit. So now we're going to go chase them for a building permit. But while we're chasing them for a building permit that they didn't have, we're still going to tax you. We're going to yeah. We're going to put the assessment up. Yeah. We're right. gonna, oh, it's another another hundred thousand yeah. dollars just yeah. went on your property. Yeah. So so again, and I, yeah. And another factor in this is also it. Not only is there property tax and income tax, but you can deduct. Now I'm not a tax advisor, but. It, I read on Google that <laughs> through Bing, so that you can if you also you can deduct that or sales tax. You, and yeah, that, and one so or if, the other. Yeah. If you're thinking about buying that yacht you've been saving up with, you know, your entire life, the sales tax that you could deduct is up to the ten thousand. So if you're if you're having a once in a lifetime event where you're going to buy something, buy big, that Lamborghini, yeah, yeah, and say and write the sales tax off. You right. Well, that that is the, under that ten thousand dollars. So check with your tax attorney, your yeah. advisor on that. But that's how I, yeah, I interpret before, it as before well. Before you write the big check yeah. <laughs> for that Lamborghini, yeah. <laughs> you might want to think about you know what the tax well, the tax will be, and you can only deduct yeah. 10, uh, ten up to ten thousand. Before ten grand. you used to be able to take yeah. it over. Okay, we, we actually we went through half the show yeah. already. It's amazing, yeah. It just yeah. Goes so we got we're we're going to take a break. We're going to pay some bills. We're going to come back and we're going to continue down this uh, storyline of uh, the layman's look at what the implications of the new tax laws are on us poor That's people good. here. Yeah. Back in a minute. This is Think Tech Hawaii raising public awareness. Match day is no ordinary day. The pitch. Hallowed ground for players and supporters alike. Excitement builds. Game plans are made with responsibility in mind. Celebrations are underway. Ready for kickoff, MLS clubs and our supporters rise to the challenge. We make responsible decisions while we cheer on our heroes and toast their success. Elevate your match day experience. If you drink, never drive. I'm Helen Dora Hyden, the host of Voice of the Veteran, seen here live every Thursday afternoon at 1 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. As a fellow veteran and veterans advocate with over 23 years experience serving veterans, active duty, and family members, I hope to educate everyone on benefits and accessibility services by inviting professionals in the field to appear on the show. 
In addition, I hope to plan on inviting guest veterans to talk about their concerns and possibly offer solutions. As we navigate and work together through issues, we can all benefit. Please join me every Thursday at 1 p.m. for the Voice of the Veteran. Aloha! Aloha! Gordo the Techs are here. Welcome to another exciting episode of Hiwachi Talk. Our conversation today is the layman's look at the tax changes that are in effect in 2018 as we're coming up on April um, to file your taxes for 2017. I've done mine already. Um, I'm close. Oh, you're close. Okay, good. So <laughs> we're there. We're, you know, I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm not exactly thrilled, but I'll do, I'm okay with it. It's fine. I You're think probably people, okay. people need to, and people need to realize that, you know, it's calendar year 17, that all of that activity is under the old tax law. Yeah. And so if you didn't do anything to plan, you know, before 12, 31, 17, it is what it is. Yeah, that's and, it. And so the, the big thing, I think one of the, the things we want to take away from this is you need to uh, give yourself plenty of time toward the end of this year. Yeah. to think about what you're doing, to find an advisor, and to do planning so that based on what the advisor says, you've got two or three months to, to do whatever you want to do right. to impact your taxes. Yeah, don't wait till yeah. December 15th, 2018 right. to do, do it. it. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm with you. I think, you know, no later, no later than September of this year. Um, right. you, need you, to be, you need to be sitting, uh, yeah. talking with, with um, your, your advisors and planners yeah. on it. Yeah. Um, if, you're, if you're sitting around in January 19 and discovered something and it's the, oh, I should have or I could have, it's too late. Yeah. It's the uh, federal government is the calendar year. Yeah, and that's, and that's and what it is. So you need to take some time to plan it. So really, you know, September, October, uh, you should know somebody, be talking through it. So you've got a couple of months to do whatever you want to do. Right. And I can guarantee you that the people down at the big square building down the street here are not putting any tax benefit packages together to cut us a break um, based on that limit we talked about right. earlier. There's no yeah. way they're, they're doing anything. Right. They're, they're just complaining, saying that's the problem with the fact that we've got, you know, we've got a Republican as the president. That may be true, but that doesn't mean you can't yeah. come back and help us right. as a yeah. Democrat. Yeah. So, you know, but never mind, they'll get their hands in the pocket. Yeah. Anyway, so this is, we're going to talk about the next thing we're going to talk about is the mortgage deduction. And um, this is going to take a little bit of conversation because, Larry, we've all done some research on this, and we've all got different answers. So this is the key. This, this is, we all have different answers and, and such. So, but the, the, we know for sure that the deduction for interest is capped at $750,000. So if you have an eight hundred thousand dollar mortgage right. in, into the future, into the future, mm -hmm. into the future, into the future, you are going to you're going to be capped at eight hundred. Now, if you entered into that mortgage prior to December fifteenth right. of two thousand and seventeen, you're fine. You're fine. So yeah. if you got, but if you're signed that mortgage on December the sixteenth, two thousand and seventeen, and it was eight hundred thousand, you just lost. Interest on that fifty thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah, the tax benefit. The tax benefit yeah. is gone, on that. and that's that's done. It's over. So, a perfect example of why you need to talk to planners. Right. Now, did they even did they even know this in December the fifteenth? When did we yeah. sign this? Is when? Just I think just yeah. after before I think it was around around Christmas. I'm not sure. December twenty second before, yeah. Yeah, but there, it was December, right in so, there. Yeah, it was yeah. December the twenty second. Was with it. This was a quiz. Nice job, but did Thanks. December the twenty yeah. second. Yeah. So anyway, so it's um, my answer was conceptually before Christmas. Yeah, but but there's still there's st yeah there still is a limit though of one million dollars for mortgages that were established prior to December the fifteenth, yeah. two thousand and seventeen. So even then, it's got ca it got it's cap. Got cap. Now I just can't imagine a million dollar mortgage. No. Sorry guys, it's beyond my, I can yeah. my little feeble <coughs> mind. <laughs> I say I'm losing my breath just thinking about it. Yeah. I can't get my head wrapped around a million dollar mortgage. Right. But right, mind you, right. Kakaako, not Kaka, yeah, Kakaako. Yeah. All the prices yeah. of the condos and everything down mm -hmm. in there. I mean, uh, people came at 10, 20 percent down yeah. on 1.2 million. That still leaves. Yeah. yeah. Well, see, but see, a lot of the reason people would do it from a, a financial standpoint. Say you're a small business person or a kind of a semi-small business okay. person. Probably the lowest interest rate you could get to borrow money would be if you had the house mortgage. to support it right. would be your mortgage. Right. So say your your mortgage was four and a half percent interest and then you could deduct uh, all of that interest on your taxes and you're in a thirty percent bracket, 
So you would borrow as much as you could on your house because you're effectively paying 3%. Yeah, because you're going to get that and, break. And then, so the fact that that money kind of went over and you spend it on your small business is, a, is another story. Right. But that was cheaper than going down to the friendly bank and saying, I'm going to open a small business. Are you going to give me 3% interest? And when they quit laughing, yeah. they would tell you <laughs> they're right. Okay. Yeah. Well, I've been there, so, been yeah. there, and done that, so, right? So, yeah. so, so a lot of people you know, that are small business people that, that had the house that could support, that had the appraisal to support the mortgage, might have a pretty sizable mortgage. Yeah. Right. Because and, it's cheap money yeah. for them to use and, in there. So that was with that, a tax benefit. Yeah, with the tax benefit, and that. But that's the old logic. So people that had been doing this all their lives are used to the fact that that, that house mortgage was a source of funding, mm -hmm. and now it's not. Yeah. So now let's throw the ultimate. I'm going to call this the ultimate curve because I don't know, and and we both we read know, is yeah. home equity lines of credit. Yeah. Okay. A home equity line of credit. I have heard. Opposite stories I've heard. One is the interest deduction for home equity lines of credit gone. And I've heard, oh no, it's still there. And then I went and saw what the IRS said. And the IRS said, the Internal Revenue Service said the taxpayers can continue to deduct the interest they pay on home equity loans in many cases, in quotes. But it doesn't tell you what the cases are. Yeah. So what are the cases that aren't? And right. so I'm, I'm sitting here with that confusion plus it's also tied to the cap right yeah right so if you've got a five hundred thousand dollar mortgage and a two hundred fifty thousand dollar home equity line of credit that's all you can have so yeah. if you got a five hundred thousand dollar mortgage and a three hundred thousand home equity line of credit eight hundred thousand dollars cap is seven fifty that fifty thousand again right. does not get right get, you do not realize, realize the benefit on the interest on that one right if in fact yeah. you can take it so, so, but you you saw something that said that we get it right, right. But this is you know, it's, it's, it's your line, saying, yes. and and see that it's probably so complex that this again is have the Congress did whatever they did in their wisdom, and now these wisdom. these <laughs> the gnomes down at the IRS are trying to write regulations right. to implement something that could be kind of goofy. Yeah. And so they're trying to figure that out. And then your consultant or your tax advisor has got to learn from the IRS right. what they're saying. Right. And so again, this is before you start going crazy on home equity lines this year. Yep. You need to talk to whoever your advisor is to get as much certainty as you can. Yeah, because you know, if yeah. you're saying home equity line, because I, you know, I've read some things, and again, these are the things I've read. doesn't mean it's authenticated. One is if you take out a home equity line of credit and you use it to upgrade your home, yeah. you'll get that. Well, then how do you prove that I upgraded yeah. my home Upgraded my home <laughs> with that home equity line of credit and didn't go off and buy my Lamborghini? Yeah. Would they get the ten percent? Yeah. So that would have upgraded thing. my garage. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Oh, there you go. See, <laughs> in many cases, this is, yeah. he's, he's, he's a good a tax advisor. Yeah. I've got a Lamborghini in it, <laughs> as, as opposed to a forty-year-old Lotus that hasn't run forever. Yeah. So I mean, so, <laughs> so again, we're just, we're just I'm trying to get to people understand is, is this is that there is no pat answer. I mean, I sat yesterday with an expert in the field and who told me no on HELOCs. He said no. And I said, what if I used HELOC to buy another house? He went, no. And then I go to the internet and I bring up the IRS thing and I said, well, what about this? Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, what's the date of that? Yeah. Well, that was uh, February 27th. Oh, well, that's come out since the last time I had. So uh, this is a moving target. Yeah, yeah. And it, what about, you know, if you have a reverse mortgage? I don't know. I don't know what, how that works today. Oh, no. I clearly don't know how it works tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, how does that work? <laughs> but, but how mortgage? does it work? Who knows? Yeah. Who what, knows? what interest is deductible on that? And did you have to have a reverse mortgage before? Yeah. You know, oh. the end of last year. Again, this is why we're having this. These are heads we're doing this. These are, yeah. these are the, our purpose of this show today is to confuse the hell out of you. Uh, so, because it is. Yeah. I mean, we, and we we've got pretty extensive financial backgrounds, and we're we're stumbling to the beat of a different drummer every time we walk down the street here on this stuff. We just don't know. Like just, so, just, yeah. So you know, as you're talking to your family and you're you're looking at at business transactions you want to do. How you've done it for the last 30 years yeah. is different, or yeah. could be different. Yeah, could be different. And so you just can't say, oh, we're going to do this, and we're going to use that home equity line to get it done. Yeah. It might not work anymore. Yeah. Or, you're, or you're going to end up paying a, a big price come tax time. Yeah. 
Yeah. If you do it the and way you thought you, you were going to get an eight thousand um, dollar, if you paid eight thousand yeah. dollars in interest, you thought you were going to get a benefit of that, yeah. Yeah. and it you wasn't there. Not. And then, and then, couple that to the fact that we're a high tax state and the ten thousand dollar cap, right? And we're and you can get there a lot quicker. We can yeah. get there really quick. Um, so you add that to it, so you know, so this I don't think Hawaii is going to fare all that well yeah, yeah. as a result yeah. of this yeah. at all. So and then so then we'll, we'll there's and again there's so many things in this and I just tried to pick like the top maybe five or six things yeah. that are, are of interest. Now let's go we'll go to your retirement savings and that's all changing as well. Yeah. So um, your your IRAs, your Roths, your four hundred one ks, all of that stuff is going through changes. Uh, capital gains tax is changing. Um, the, all kinds of things are happening in that space. And I, I spent at least a good couple hours reading it, and at the end, I was even more confused. I was like, I just don't, I don't, I don't understand it anymore. And and we're getting to that age where we have to start drawing down on our on our right. our, our retirement monies. Yeah. I mean, could put us in a higher tax bracket, right? You know, right. and, and <laughs> oh, a minimum. Just take the minimum. Um, but we got all of that happening. So um, you got again, you got to be talking to your financial advisor about um, right. that. Uh, um, you did increase the amount though that you can contribute to your four hundred one k. Yeah, yeah. So that went up five hundred bucks. So that's good. Five hundred dollars, five hundred dollars. Yeah, right. But, um, but you know those the, there's limits now, um, which were there before. Um, your savings in IRAs and how they're looked at. That's all being looked at. Mm -hmm. um, contributions to Roth. Here was one that you know I thought was ingenious, and I was looking at it this year. If I could roll over my 401k to a Roth IRA, when you take your money from this is what my understanding is. Don't bet on it. But it's my understanding. If I'm taking my contribution out from my 401k when I'm supposed to at 70 and a half, that's a taxable event. Mm -hmm. But if I'm taking my contribution out of a Roth IRA at 70 and a half, that income is not taxed. That's that, my understanding. That's my understanding. Least, maybe not today, but last year. Last year. Yeah. Today, that might be different. Yeah. yeah. So that might be different. So anyway, we got a minute. You got any last kind of comments you want to say to the viewers on this stuff? So because you're in it like me. Yeah. I'd go back to what you know Larry said originally is come September, make sure you know who you want to go through to to talk about what this tax implicate all the implication yeah, is yeah. for you and your family right it's finally it's the point you really need the experts in here yeah. and i can hardly wait to see what TurboTax and all those oh. other other players are going to do right. out there you know yeah. when we got to go file your return yeah it's going to be insane it's, i think we we have lots of questions amongst ourselves yeah and, and let's throw up the disclaimer at the end because I want to make sure we say this at last, the last slide. We are not tax advisors or consultants. Check with your CPA, financial advisor, and tax accountant. Prepare a list of what you should look at in 2018 and meet with those people that know it before December 31st, 2018. Yeah, yeah. Three months before. Anyway, that's um, Hibachi Talk for another exciting day. We're covering all kinds of topics. That's last right. week was Tupperware. <laughs> this is about the same, yeah. you know. Tupperware to tax. I mean, who's, who knows what yeah. we're going to do yeah, next right. week? We're in the tease. Oh, maybe yeah. we can talk about politics next week. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Here we go. Anyway, Gordon the Texar, Rick Savanmeister, Larry, it's always great to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you. It's fun. Thank you. We'll see you again next week. And like we say at the end of every show, one, two, three. How are you doing? doing?